I am Sylvia Reynolds, um, long time Vice County Recorder for County Limerick. I have held various positions in the BSBI, including Honorary Vice President, and I'm an honorary member. So I have now retired from being Vice County for Limerick after nearly 40 years. And I want to tell you something about how I carried out that role. But first of all, a little bit of background. I did my botany in Trinity in the mid 1960s with David Webb. And so we got a good taxonomic training. And um, in, then I got introduced to the BSBI early on because my aunt was very friendly with botanist Maura Scannell who knew I was doing botany and told her about a BSBI junior meeting at Ranstone in 1964. It was a two week residential meeting. And at the end of that meeting, I absolutely knew that I wanted to be botan a botanist. After Trinity, I went to Vancouver and did a master's on a large brown seaweed, but I always kept my interest in higher plants. In 1977, Julian and I returned to Dublin, and I think I joined the Dublin Naturalist Field Club very early on. In 1983, the then chairman of the BSBI committee, um, that is Daniel Kelly, and you can see him here nearly 20 years earlier with glasses just on the right hand side of the boatman. He asked if I would be vice county recorder for Limerick because he knew that I had family connections there and it meant I would have somewhere to stay if I went um, botanizing. And that is when I joined the BSBI. As for other vice county recorders, that's not all you do. You've got other commitments and diversions along the way. And at that time in the early 1980s, my main commitment was to family because I had three young children. And we were mainly based in Dublin, but we spent our summer holidays on Foynes Island where my parents lived. And we stayed in this cottage on the island in the Shannon Estuary. And at that time, I started recording the plants on the island. I had an old dissecting microscope and because there was no electricity the light source was sunlight. In those days I mainly used Webb's flora because it was pre the stasis floras. I also did some recording on the mainland in West Limerick um, and there had been very little recording in Limerick between the early 1900s and when I became vice county recorder. And there were no particular recording schemes in the early 1980s, BSBI schemes, but I do remember Vice County Recorders got sent a form every year asking, including asking whether you were writing a flora, and at that time the answer was no. From very early on, right from the beginning, I made notes when I was out in the field recording what I had seen. And then when I came home, I would write them out tidily into what I've always called my field notebooks. The very first one was just a, a little copy exercise book and all the others have been hardbacks. And it's been uh, really invaluable over the years because I was able to go back and check where I was and what I saw on a particular day. And then within a couple of years, I also started a, a card file and my basic list came from the 1987 census catalogue. I put in some of the, the records that I had already made and then I went through the National Herbarium and Trinity College Herbarium and later the Ulster Museum and um, adding details of limerick specimens and from the literature point of view I went through the Cybele Hibernicas, Irish Topographical Botany, Irish Naturalist, Irish Naturalist Journal and any other relevant journals. And again, the information in the card file, three shoe, bo three shoe boxes, has been um, invaluable when I was doing, for example, flora writing. The first BSBI recording scheme that I was involved with was the monitoring scheme in 1987 and 1988. We recorded in three tetrads in designated hectads. 
and all the recording cards were sent back to the BSBI and the staff had the huge task of digitizing the records. And at the same time as this in Dublin, I was actively recording for the Dublin Naturalist Field Club's Flora of County Dublin. And in Dublin, uh, we had a good map with the one kilometer squares marked, but that was not usual for the rest of the country. My Limerick maps were half inch Ordnance Survey maps just with the 10 kilometer squares marked. So early on, I made myself an overlay showing the one kilometer squares, which meant I was able to get uh, four figure grid references for my records. And again, they mightn't have been dead accurate, but very um, useful later if I wanted to go back and refine plants. So the first major diversion um, in 1988, we used to row across from the island, bottom left of your screen, over to Foyne's port on the right. And I started noticing that there were plants that I didn't know, quite exotic plants growing on the harbour. And that was the start of my interest in alien plants. To cut a long story short, seeds were introduced with imported animal feed and spilt on the, the quay and then those seeds germinated and hence the alien plants. And I very quickly noticed that I was finding the same assemblages of plants on roadsides leading away from Foyne's port. And a couple of my markers were the common amaranth, Amaranthus retroflexus, and green bristlegrass, Ceteria viridis. And then I would stop and see what else was growing with them. I then went all around the country visiting other ports um, looking at roadsides as I went and, of course, stopping and checking any, any alien plants. And as I got more interested, I went through the National Herbarium in Trinity again and extracted all the earlier records from specimens of alien plants for the whole country. I went through the literature again, through the, the Cybeles and the journals. And this time I ended up with four shoeboxes in my card file. And the imported animal feed was just one source. The other main source were alien plants. Their origin was, they were of cultivated origin. This was, this was a personal project, but two BSBI referees were particularly important. Um, Eric Clement, who wrote the Alien Plants Handbook, and Bruno Rives, who wrote the Alien Grasses. And my catalogue of alien plants was published by the Botanic Gardens in 2002 and has been um, much cited since. Meanwhile, back in Limerick, um, we, there was a push to record for Atlas 2000. And luckily, I've always really liked recording and I had to do most of it myself because I wasn't aware of any other active botanists in the county at the time. But also at that stage, we were able to turn in our records um, at 10 kilometer grid references. So it was with less detail, even though I had detail for my records. So then there was a bit of a lull after Atlas 2000 and I had published my alien plants. So I started thinking about uh, limerick flora and started writing entries, but I quickly realized that I didn't have all the habitat information that I wanted, particularly for the less rare species. At that stage, the children were a bit older and Julian was a bit freer. So we went and, and did targeted field work, looking at um, different habitats and noting the characteristic species, because what I wanted for the flora was that they were just observations in Limerick, that there was no derivative information. And one always has fun along the way. There was a pond dug beside Griston Bog in Southeast Limerick by the locals. They stocked it with fish. When they found herons taking their fish, they introduced um, an alien plant, curly waterweed, Lagrosiphon major. And as most of you will know, that becomes very invasive and you can see the huge amounts that this man has already pulled out and uh, when we checked it again last year the lagrosiphon is as dense as ever there. Um, another day we were out on the railway, old railway line near Adair, gave you access to fields and ditches and I don't know who is more startled, us or the llama. But fieldwork is only what, part of what we do. 
um, I reckon that I have spent at least as much time, if not more, after field work, checking specimens, writing up notes, pressing specimens, getting in contact with referees and compiling records. So a, a lot more work. The chapter that I enjoyed most writing for the flora was the one on the history of recording. And there was a, a family connection. In 1935, my grandmother on the island and my then teenage father, I think bicycled off to a bog in West Limerick and they found Pinguicula grandiflora, large flower butterwort, new to the county. My grandmother must have let Prager know almost immediately about it because he wrote back to her within a few days, sort of saying that she should um, uh, survey, see, see how extensive the Pinguicula was there because it was at the edge of its range in um, Southwest Ireland. Um, and that has been done since the Pinguicula is still growing on that bog. And this beautiful illustration comes from Sowerby's Botany um, in the 1880s. So writing the flora, wait a minute, I think I've missed one. The flora was eventually published in 2013 by the Botanic Gardens. And I was grateful for a grant from the BSBI towards the designing and printing costs. And I was very pleased when I saw it in a Limerick bookshop. So flora writing was only one strand of what I was doing at the time. I taught a botany lab at UCD and a night class on plant identification. And I also did some consulting work, such as a rare and scarce survey for the NPWS in 2006. And because Atlas 2020 at that time seemed uh, quite far off, the BSBI devised some, um, some other projects for its members. One was the Threatened Plant Project. Here's the nice little field gentian, um, which was one of the species that we surveyed. And then a few years later, there was the Irish Species Project and the Moonwort Batrichium was one of the species there that, that we surveyed. And I also organized a few field meetings. This was a particularly enjoyable one up the Galtee Mountains where Paul Green, spotted two tiny, tiny plants of Ophiodlossum adder's tongue and Botrychium, uh, both very good new records for that area. Then it was time for another recording push, this time towards Atlas 2020, and things had changed considerably in the 20 years. We now had the more detailed discovery maps, we had GPSs, we had uh, STACE editions, I think three and four, so it was a very different time, but what I found very useful was to mark exactly, when planning further field work, was to mark exactly where I had gone, then you'd know where the gaps were. That was in orange, and then the pink crosses were where our three friends did recording. It was um, a, a different time. In the 1980s, it was mainly members recording for mapping purposes, and by Atlas 2020, uh, records were accepted from outside the society and were much more widely used. Um, the society had become much more um, professional, technology was much more sophisticated, and our records had a real commercial value. And I must admit that towards the end of Atlas 2020, um, it was quite a chore to have to evaluate numerous records in the BSBI's database from outside sources and some of really very variable quality. Of course, we had fun doing Atlas 2020 as well. Um, three friends, Mike Quirk, Tom Harrington and Paul Murphy came on board for the last few years of Atlas 2020, they went to different places uh, from where I did. And we also had um, great fun on our joint expeditions, but they really produced numerous records and helped greatly with the cover. And then one day we were out, um, Mike had taken part, 
part in the Great Limerick cleanup and happened to have his litter picker with him when my field card blew into the Brambley and Netley ditch and I'd never been able to re recover it otherwise. So Atlas 2020 was over and another lull and then along came COVID and it took advantage of being confined to home to um, compile more details of my historical and pre-2000 records and also to work on um, an inventory of botanical sites in Limerick, something like about 160 sites, and then most recently a rare plant register. And the rare plant register, um, it, it includes updates of many of the records of the rare species that were in the flora, useful updates, but it's also, I hope, a good um, baseline against which future surveys can be compared. And that's the lovely um, hairy violet, Viola herta, a protected species, which is included in the rare plant register. So here we are back on Foynes Island again, looking towards the port with the native species of Vichia sativa. And on the whole, I, I really enjoyed my time and the privilege of being a vice county recorder, but I did make my opinions known. It was a good few years ago, um, vice county recorders were sent a memo telling them how much they cost the society each year. I think it was a couple of hundred pounds. And it was very quick to respond and tell them how much it cost us to generate all those records in a voluntary capacity for them. And I heard no more about it. I've always really appreciated the help from BSBI staff and particularly valued interactions with other botanists, BSBI botanists on field meetings and have a very special regard for the BSBI referees and really uh, wonderful personnel in the organization. So as well as my notebooks and field cards and marked maps, one of the things I kept was my botanical correspondence. And it wasn't until I sorted it out that I realized I had letters from maybe about 200 correspondents, very many of them, the BSBI referees and members, and maybe a few consultants in there as well, or other people inquiring about the flora of Limerick. So I've put them all together and I plan to deposit these in our national herbarium at the National Library there. And um, one of them you can see there on the left was from Eric Clement, um, who, who checked and definitely added value to my alien plants. And I think he used the most exclamation marks. I think I counted seven in one letter. And on the right, David Allen, who sent all the records back for the brambles, for the rubus, and he always wrote in felt pen and sometimes really difficult to read, but I think a very interesting resource for the future. I feel very lucky to have had botany in my life and the support in all my endeavors from my family. When I was a child, my grandfather showed me the wild plants on the island and some of them are still growing in the same place. I see them every time we visit. And now I'm a grandmother and I have shown um, some of my grandchildren the same plants. During lockdown, this is Elsie in England, our little granddaughter. I was very impressed at how diligently she looked at a dandelion plant and drew it. So finally, I want to say a very special thank you to Julian. I could never have done all the things I did without his help. And this was on our 50th wedding anniversary last year. It was a lovely day. So off we headed to um, Limerick and a dried out Turlock and other places. And I think it was maybe not that day, but on another day after we'd crossed a particularly cut over um, nasty bog, we found this well-placed sofa at the edge of the bog. And so now I am hanging up my BSBI boots if not my botanical boots. And I would like to wish my successor or successors that they have as enjoyable a time and I will help with any transition as much as I can. Thank you. <laughs>